Today I'm going to show you how to sew a simple v-neck knit band onto a knit t-shirt. I'm just going to do the neck, the neck band, nothing else in the shirt, just to show you the way that I do it in um, my Hey June patterns. There are several different ways to do this, but I found that this one typically gives the best result um, and is most like ready to wear clothing. So as you can see, I have my neck band already cut here, and one side is on the fold, and one side has these V's, and it's right it's right sides together already, so that's how we'll be sewing it. The first step is to sew this V area closed using the seam allowance that's dictated in the pattern. So let's go ahead and do that first. If I was using something really stable like a cotton lycra, I could just go in and sew it. However, this is kind of a flimsy rayon band, uh, so I'm going to actually put a little bit of tissue paper, just what you get for gift wrapping. I'm going to put it right under my presser foot, and then I'm going to lay the fabric directly on top of it. You can use fancy things like tearaway stabilizer, but this is something most of us have in our homes and it's easy to access and it's cheap, so I'm just going to use that. You're not going to be able to see your seam allowance guide, so I just kind of make a note of where it generally falls. So let's get started. And as you can see, it's not bunching up, it's not eating my fabric, it's not sucking it down. So everything's looking good. And you want to sew just into the point of the V. So I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to lift up my presser foot and shift the entire thing so I can sew the other side. Now when you bring your presser foot back down, you want to make sure you're going to sew with the same seam allowance over here. You might need to take one more stitch. Mine looks pretty good, so I'm going to keep on going. And make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end so that your neck band won't come apart while you're sewing it. Now at this point, you can simply tear off the tissue paper. And there you have it. There might be some little pieces and we can grab those later and worst case scenario, they'll wash out in the wash. So, so your next step is to take your beautifully sewn v-neck there and you want to use a pair of really sharp scissors. These little Fiskars are my very favorite scissors. I use them for everything and cut right into the point but not through the stitch line. So you just want to get as close to it as you can. There you go. Now I'm going to take this over to my iron and I have the steam set really high. It's full of water. You always want to do that when you're sewing a knit garment. And I'm going to press open the seam allowances like that. So I'm actually going to open up the neckband on my ironing board and just press those two open, the top and the bottom, like that. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've pressed open my seam allowances. I use lots of steam so they're laying nice and flat even though this is a really flimsy fabric. So I'm just going to fold the neckband right sides or wrong sides together, sorry, just like you would do with a regular neckband. And it's important to make sure that your center stitch line here at the V lines up perfectly on both sides. So just take a minute to make sure those line up really well and I'm actually going to head back to my iron in a second and iron the entire neckband wrong sides together all the way around like this so you can also adjust it at your ironing board but right now what we want to do is clip off these excess seam allowances that are sticking up above the neckband. And if you're using a serger and you do a lot of knit sewing, you don't actually have to clip these off because your serger will cut them off in the final step. Um, but I'm going to sew this entire thing on a sewing machine just to show you that it can be done. So there we go. Another thing I want you to note is I'm using white thread just so it'll stand out for a couple steps in the future. but when you're wearing this garment, it's going to have a tendency to pull right here, and you can see my white thread. So it's very important to match your thread to your fabric for this seam that we did. So just a note. 
So I'm going to go press this entire thing wrong sides together, aligning the raw edges all the way around the neckband. And then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, I'm back from my ironing board and as you see, I've pressed the entire neckband wrong sides together and I've used a lot of steam so even these edges that tend to curl toward the right side are behaving pretty well. Um, pressing it like that creates a really nice crisp v-neck front so it's a really important step and then also in the back it's made a nice crease line which will be helpful for later. I also managed to lose half of my nail over there somehow. So I'm just going to open this up and at this point before you sew the next stitch it's really important to make sure again that this seam is directly on top of this seam and a good way to just make sure is to stick a pin whoops, right through the center of the seam and make sure it comes out the seam on the other side. So this is looking great. We are going to sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just starting about an inch away from the point of the V. Now this is technically a basting stitch so if you wanted to you could um, lengthen your stitches. I'm not going to do that here because um, hopefully if we do this right they won't show in the final and if they do we can still rip them out. So Don't lock your stitches at the beginning and the end just in case you rip them out later. And you want your needle to come down directly in that seam. So go one stitch at a time just to make sure this is looking great before you lift your presser foot and flip the neckband. And then we're going to continue sewing again about an inch away from the point. Okay, so that's looking good. And as you can see, we have a nice V that comes right to that point. Okay, so we're done with the neckband for now. We're going to set it aside. And you want to bring out your shirt. At this point, according to pattern directions, you've already sewn the shirt right sides together along the shoulder seams and pressed the seam allowances toward the back of the shirt. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did to the neckband to the shirt front. We're going to sew a basting stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance starting about an inch away from the point of the V. And once again, we're just going to stop right at that point. And it's a little bit of an eyeballing, but you can get pretty close, especially with such a small seam allowance. And just pivot the shirt until you can come back on the other side with the same seam allowance. And this acts as a guide and also as a way to stabilize your V as you're sewing, especially for this really flimsy rayon blend. Mine's kind of gathered a little bit here, so I'm just going to even that out. And now, just like the neckband, we want to clip into the point of that V, not through the stitches, just as close to them as possible. So there you have that. Now this is the right side of the shirt. I'm just going to lay that there for now. Actually, I'll open it up. And at this point, if your fabric is not directional, you can choose which side of the band you want to be the front. So if one's looking a little bit better, or maybe stripe placement is looking a little bit better on one side, you know, you could choose that side to be the front. Um, this one is showing a little bit less white stitching in here, so I'm going to pick that to be my front side. So I'll come right back and show you how we're going to pin the neckband to the neckline. Okay, so here I have my shirt laying out ready to um, attach the neckband. Now I've chosen this to be the front side of my neckband, so the final neckband will sit like this. So when I sew it right sides together, I need to flip them like that. The first step is to take a pin, 
place it right through that stitch line, right where your basting stitches are at that point. And then you want to align that point with the center of the stitching on your shirt. So I'm just going to do that. And that's going to be a little difficult because we've cut almost up to the stitch line. But just get it in there as good as you can. See, it's going to want to come out a little bit, and that's fine. It's really just a guide until we get to our sewing machine. And so our next step in sewing, and I'll show you here because it's hard to see once it's underneath the presser foot, is to make sure that point that's pinned stays stationary. And then to align the seam allowance with the sh on the shirt with the seam allowance on the neckband. And as you can see, we can open up the shirt because we've cut that slit. So I'm going to align that edge and I'm going to start sewing right where I left off here, but I'm going to sew slightly inside of that so that this seam will not be visible on the outside. So slightly on this side of it. Now as you can see, if I start sewing here, I'm going to have all this fabric bunched up underneath. And that's um, just what you have to deal with when you're sewing a v-neck. So what you want to do is put the presser foot down. I'll use a pin to show you how I'm going to do this. Put the presser foot down, put your needle through both fabrics right there, and then use your hand to push this fabric as far as you can to this side of the shirt, on this side of the point of the V. So I'm going to sew to here, I'm going to stop with my needle down, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, pivot all the way over here, is anyone thinking of Ross from Friends right now? Pivot, 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 okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move all this excess shirt to that side. And I'm gonna sew until I get to that point and stop right there. So it seems a little confusing here. It's one of those things that just really takes some practice. Um, I recommend uh, making yourself a neck band, making a shirt pattern, maybe just cutting it off here so you don't waste a lot of fabric, and just, you know, giving yourself some practice tries. So the more experience you have at this, the better you get. I've been sewing knit neck bands on now for, well, V-necks, I want to say for about four years, and I still make mistakes sometimes. So just give yourself a little, a little bit of a grace period there to practice and get it right. But that's basically what we're about to do on the sewing machine. Okay, I have my shirt positioned under my presser foot, just as we described earlier. So what I've done here is on my Bernina, if you can see, I have a little center line guide here that shows exactly where the stitch line will be. And I've lined that up with my original stitch line on my neck band. And I've actually moved the needle over one position to the left so that I'll be just inside that stitch line. Now, if your machine doesn't have the ability to shift over one to the left, you need to get a new one. No, I'm just kidding, but you should. But um, I, I just love Bernina's. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm not being paid to say that. They're the best. So you can just eyeball it. It's very easy. And I'm just talking about like a hair's breadth to the left of this stitch line. So you just want to come down and stitch just inside of it right here. So I'm going to start stitching until I get to this point and then I'm going to stop with my needle down. I like to just put my needle down to begin with and just make sure while I'm holding the center that there's no excess fabric that's going to get caught in this stitch, in the shirt. So let's start sewing. And I'm using, I mean, you'll see that it's going to be um, a greater seam allowance, obviously, if we're coming within this stitch line. And the rest of the seam allowance on the neckband is still a quarter of an inch. And that's actually okay because I have a little thing called Pythagorean theorem. And this distance here is going to be greater than this, so it's okay that we're trimming off a little bit of um, seam allowance here um, and then using a smaller seam allowance up here. So it'll all work out because of math. All right, let's get going. As I approach the center, I'm just going to remove my pin and try to keep everything as aligned as possible. And I just want to Bring my needle down exactly on that stitch line. I think I might have gone a little too far. We can check. And if you go a little too far, that's okay because you can back stitch. All right. 
now what I'm going to do is leave my needle down, lift my presser foot, and just pivot the shirt over to this side and pivot the neck band so that the seam allowance, the raw edges align here. And as you can see, I need to push all this excess fabric out of the way, especially want to make sure it's not being caught at the center. And bring it back down and use the same seam allowance here. Okay. And now, here's our moment of truth. Let's see how we did. I'm including you in this. So it's looking pretty good. There's a little bit of a wrinkle right there, but it's not because the fabric is, is caught in the neckband, it's just the way it's sitting. So that tells me that I don't need to, to re-sew it. Um, in fact, I mean, the pressing will take that right out. I would venture to say that no knit neckband is going to look good until you press it. So don't be discouraged if you pull it out from under your sewing machine or serger and you're not impressed with it right away. Um, just pressing is just, or steaming is just a, a part of sewing that you have to do to make everything look nice. So go up to your uh, ironing board at this point, steam the crap out of that sucker, technical term there, and we'll come right back. Okay, now we have our shirt all pressed, and as you can see, that wrinkle did come out really easily with just a little bit of steam. Um, and so now we're going to sew the rest of the neckband to the neckline. And the most important thing here is obviously making sure that it's not twisted. So what we're going to do is flip the neckband down because we're going to sew the raw edges together. And just kind of walk your neckband up and around to make sure it's not twisted. And at the center back, we have that handy crease that, from when we press the neckband. And this pattern also has a notch. Some don't. And you want to align that with the center back, which I've also marked with a notch. So we're just going to align those two and use a pin to keep that part in place. And this pattern and many patterns will have um, a quarter marking. So right now we have the halves marked and the quarters will be somewhere around here um, because the front of the shirt, the neckline is so much um, lower, has a greater length than the back, the center um, quarter marks are going to be on the front side, about an inch and a half down from the shoulder seam. And on the neckband, of course, the quarter seams will be right here and right here. If there's not a notch on the pattern, that's how you find them. Just keep folding until you find the four quarter marks of your neckline. And that works for a scoop neck also. So. What you would do is align those two quarter markings and pin there, but if you've done a few neck bands and you feel a little bit of a, a little bit confident, what I like to do is actually only pin it here, and then I have this sewn edge stationary and a pin here, and I actually find it easier to stretch between those two as I'm sewing. Um, I think it just produces a more reliable result um, because every fabric is different. So if you cut a notch on a fabric that, um, like rayon, that doesn't have very great recovery, it can grow, it can stretch as you're handling it. So just to make sure that it doesn't get um, kind of wonky, I only use one pin. I'm not saying that's what you should do on your first try. That's just um, the way that I found I have the best results. So we're going to take this over to our sewing machine now. And with a V-neck, it's really easy because you start sewing right where you left off, and that's the same um, with a serger, you would start sewing just right here at the V, all the way around, and come on the V and it locks your stitches automatically for you, so you can just cut them off. So in this way, um, a V-neck is actually a little bit easier than a scoop neck. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna start sewing where I left off at that's uh, the inside seam allowance, and go all the way around. So let's go do that. Okay, here we are, ready for the last step. I've aligned the, sewing, um, the shirt underneath my presser foot. I'm going to start sewing on that, um, in the stitch that was just inside the seam allowance. So I'm just going to start sewing and then very gradually just angle it out so I'm sewing at the correct seam allowance. And I mean, we're talking like a sixteenth of an inch here, so 
um, it's not going to be a big deal. So what I like to do is put my needle down where I'm going to start sewing and then just kind of use my fingers as pins. I'm going to pull this, I'm holding this pin back here because that's where I know they have to align and I'm just going to pull it until the neck band is about the same length as the neck line and I'm going to just get to a certain point and hold it about the center of the two. So I'm just going to sew up to that point first and then I'm going to continue sewing. And I'm just using a straight stitch here, nothing fancy. I have 100% uh, polyester thread. Um, the v-neck does not need to stretch because it fits easily over the head. So I'm not worried about that at all. And it's just a easier, it's an easier stitch. Um, your machine will probably come with stretch stitches. I don't necessarily recommend using those here, mostly because you don't need to, but also they can, they can actually cause some problems, especially the one that looks like a little lightning bolt. A lot of people recommend that. I actually find that to be too tight for um, knits, especially looser knits like this rayon. Um, they can eat your fabric, they can cause it to bunch up, they're just not necessary, so don't worry about that. Of course, if you have a serger, that's going to be your best option right here. So I'm realigning everything, and you can do that as many times as you feel like you need to. You know, stop sewing, make sure everything's aligned, make sure this isn't curling. Continually realigning, continually pushing these curled edges down. It's a slow process, but if you uh, take the time and do it right, then you won't regret it. So now I've reached my halfway mark and I'm going to grab that pin and that's going to be my next goal. That's what I'm sewing toward right now. Make sure your um, seam allowances, if you're sewing a sewing machine, are still pressed toward the back. So now my needle is down in the very center back, and I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm just going to stretch the neck band, find kind of the approximate halfway point, and hold it there with my fingers. This um, fabric is really curling up because of the, of the content. Um, if you use something like a cotton lycra or an interlock, it probably won't curl up as, as much as this one is. So that might be a good fabric to start with for your first v-neck. But it's really not a big deal. As you can see, I just keep hmm, little acrobatics here. I just keep realigning it. I just keep pushing the curled edges straight. So it's really not a big deal. seam allowance um, on this shoulder is a little bit harder because I have to press it toward the back and sew over it and it's going to want to push forward so just go carefully and slowly as you go over the shoulder seam. Okay, I'm going to realign. back right over those stitches. Lock them in place. Alright, so our neck band is now fully sewn and as you can see, totally normal to have a little bit of kind of bunching. One part might look a little looser than the other 
and this is just because of the way fabric behaves when you stretch it out and it doesn't have great recovery. So of course, once again, the answer is steaming. So I'm going to take this to the ironing board and be right back. Okay, so I'm done pressing my neck band, and as you can see, everything is just laying beautifully. There's no wrinkles, there's no puckers. Um, if you have a serger, you could come in at this point and serge the seam allowances. Um, they're not, they're not going to fray, they're not going to unravel, so this is actually perfectly fine if you wanted to leave it like this. Um, if this part bothers you, that it's flipping up, you can also come in and just sew an edge stitch on the shirt as close to the neck band as possible all the way around and you'll catch the seam allowances underneath um, and that's actually a nice finishing option but as you can see the shirt is really finished at this point so an edge stitch is really completely up to you once again I would recommend a straight stitch um, maybe lengthen your stitches a little bit um, but yeah that's it there's your perfectly sewn knit v neck band um, looking really close or exactly exactly like a, a ready-to-wear shirt um, and now you can do it yourself at home so go ahead and practice make sure you give yourself a little bit of grace if it doesn't work out perfectly the first time and happy v-neck making